Since the beginning of athletic competition, people have been trying to get an advantage over the rest of the field. Some of these advantages may not come through legitimate strategies like training. Some athletes decide to cheat and dope. There are many different types of doping today, but today we're going to talk about one of the newest and probably most frightening kinds of doping, that is, gene doping. Gene doping, in simplest terms, is gene therapy for healthy people. The World Anti-Doping Agency, or the WADA, is an international organization created in 1999 to promote and coordinate and monitor the fight against doping in sport in all of its forms. They define gene doping as the non-therapeutic use of cells, genes, genetic elements, or modulation of gene expression having the capacity to enhance performance. Gene doping first came into the WADA's radar in 2002 when they organized a meeting between gene experts, sport ethicists, athletes, and representatives from the Olympic movement to discuss this new phenomenon. As a result of this meeting, the WADA created an expert group on gene doping. Their task is to study the latest advances in the field of gene therapy, the methods for detecting gene doping, and research fund projects funded by the WADA in this area. The WADA organized two subsequent meetings, one in 2005 with the Karolinska Institute in the Swedish Sports Confederation. The second one was in 2008 with the Russian sports authorities in St. Petersburg. All of these meetings provided the WADA with the opportunity to update on the latest research activities and developments, consider the boundaries between therapy and enhancement from both technical and ethical perspectives. They address legal framework and law enforcement issues relating to gene doping. Attendees included experts in gene transfer, scientists from the field of anti-doping, the WA's own gene doping panel members, and representatives from sports and public authorities and ethicists. The World Anti-Doping Agency's current standpoint on gene doping is the same view on all other types of doping. It is unethical and cheating. Now let's talk about the science of gene doping. To do that, first we'll have to talk about gene therapy. Gene therapy is designed to introduce genetic material into cells to compensate for abnormal genes or to make a beneficial protein. If a mutated gene causes a necessary protein to be faulty or missing, gene therapy may be able to introduce a normal copy of the gene to restore the function of the protein. These genes are introduced through the engineered retroviruses, that is, viruses that integrate their genetic material into a chromosome in the human cell or by using adenoviruses. Adenoviruses introduce their DNA into the nucleus of the cell, but the DNA is not integrated into the chromosome. Now, gene doping is basically inserting genes linked to enhance athletic performance in healthy athletes. More than 200 specific genes have been linked to superior athletic prowess. Now let's talk about some of these genes. A variant of the ACE gene linked to endurance and an alternative copy of the ACTN3 gene, dubbed the speed gene, were found in nearly every male Olympic sprinter ever tested. The ACE, or angiotensin converting enzyme gene, activates a hormone, angiotensin, that regulates the constriction of blood vessels, which in turn controls the rate of blood flow through the circulatory system. This would increase performance because the blood carries oxygen to the muscles, which is necessary for movement. And the ACTN3 gene codes for the A actin 3 protein, which is expressed in fast twitch muscles and is responsible for generating force in high velocity movements. These might include, but are not limited to, sprinting, jumping, and throwing. Having more A actin 3 will allow for more rapid muscle contraction. Now these two genes are linked to speed. There are actually different alleles found in power or endurance athletes. Two genes discovered to be linked to endurance athletes are the PPAR delta gene, a gene that's main function is to govern the lipid metabolism, or one's ability to use fat reserves in endurance sports, and the EPO gene that encodes for a protein that is essential hormone for red blood cell production. Scientists have been researching gene doping using mice, and specifically the PPAR delta gene. A group of scientists headed by Ronald Evans of the Salk Institute in La Jolla, California, demonstrated that injecting mice with this gene, and that encodes for a fat-burning protein called the PPAR delta, enabled the animals to run twice the distance of their unmodified littermates. The EPO gene encodes for erythropoietin, a hormone that plays a key role in red blood cell production. This would enhance performance because red blood cells are what brings oxygen to the muscles, and the more oxygen they have, the better they will work. Now, 
Many genes have been identified as potential candidates for gene doping, but the PPAR delta and EPO genes, these genes are considered to be the most likely to be used because of their success in mice. However, gene doping is far from being a threat in the Olympics or any other athletic competition because of its risks and dangers. Even gene therapy is still not 100% safe. In an interview with the SIRC, or Scientific Intelligence Research Sportive, Professor Theodore Friedman, the head of the WADA's panel on gene doping, gives us his insight into the scary and unpredictable world of gene doping. He says, Sport is being affected seriously by genetics in two important ways. The first positive effect is the development of new kinds of tests for any and all kinds of doping. The WADA has developed an important set of research studies and results that indicate that tools of the modern genetic revolution, the same kinds of tools that were produced the deciphering of the human genome several years ago, will be applied to finding evidence of exposure to performance enhancing materials and procedures. On the negative side, huge advances in gene therapy and the methods of introducing genes into humans to life-threatening diseases are being seen by some to allow new ways to dope and introduce genes, not to cure disease, but rather to enhance athletic performance. Genes control the function of muscle cells, blood-producing tissues, and the ways in which our bodies utilize energy, and we know that many of these genes can be manipulated. The advances in methods to introduce new genes to cure are more or less identical to those of the methods that might be used for sports enhancement. The fact that makes the likelihood of attempting at gene doping pretty high. In response to a question asking whether or not gene doping was happening right now, he says he doesn't know. However, he does, not, he does know about an incident where a prominent sports trainer in Germany was accused of attempting to obtain experimental materials used to increase blood cell production in patients with kidney disease. This is alarming because it tells us that people are attempting to cheat in these ways. Another example Professor Friedman provided us was that many sports figures have approached scientists working on potential cures for muscle disease like muscular dystrophy or blood disorders to inquire about its applications in sports. This shows us that athletes are beginning to take an interest in genetics. However, Professor Friedman reassures us by telling us about the priority level of gene doping to the WADA. He says, During the past four or five years, the WADA has developed a vigorous pro research program designed to learn how foreign genes might be used in attempts to improve athletic performance. Many laboratories around the world are taking part in the program, and the general genetics community is, submitted, is submitting high-quality proposals to the WADA. I would estimate that close to $8 million have been committed and spent in the WADA research program for gene doping, representing a significant portion of the entire WADA budget. I think that the size of the effort is appropriate for the size of the threat to sport. I am convinced that the WADA will be able to develop and eventually implement effective new ways to detect doping in sport by these new methods. Now, it may seem as though the WADA is spending a ludicrous amount of money on this research, but don't worry, these efforts haven't been fruitless. Scientists working under the WADA banner have learned a great deal about the function of some genes that are likely to be used illicitly in gene doping attempts such as genes that will produce growth factors and the aforementioned erythropoietin. This is important not just because it lets them know what genes may be targeted, but it makes it far easier to develop tests for certain doping methods. At the end of his interview, Professor Friedman reminds us of the clear dangers of gene doping. Because this technology is so immature, it is nowhere near safe. Friedman says, the technology of gene therapy is still very immature. While there will continue to be advances in serious diseases, we have been all but sobered by the magnitude of the problem of delivering genes safely into human beings and to the ways in which foreign genes can produce unwanted effects, some of which are lethal. Since the Stockholm workshop, there have been many improvements in these technologies, increasing evidence for success in some lethal diseases. There have also been additional occurrences of setbacks and adverse events, including an additional death among the group of children who have been so successfully treated for immune deficiency by gene therapy. As we continue to improve the technologies, we will sadly see more ways in which the methods can surprise us with unexpected effects and with very serious harm to patients. 
In medicine, we'd recognize that treatment can be a two-edged sword, harm and benefit. To cure disease, we accept both sides of the sword. For healthy young people, we should demand that we do no harm. Clearly, that is not the case for gene transfer technology. Now, what does this discovery of these sports genes mean for athletes who are not doping? Well, according to an art article published by the University of Utah Department of Biology, some U.S. national team coaches have begun taking an interest in athletes' genetics. They want to have athletes tested to see if they are predetermined to fit a specific niche. They plan to do these tests during selection for the national team. A Colorado-based genetics company called Atlas Sports Genetics has recently come into the news and they claim to offer an inexpensive genetic test to determine if a kid is predisposed towards a specific sports niche, and if at all, then which type, endurance, or power. This suggests parents can use this test to help them decide if their kid would excel in a baseball field or has great talents as a swimmer. It is of course not expected that every athlete has the right combination, but if in fact they have the basic knowledge that build up their athletic physiology, they will, it'll be useful for them to customize their diet and training according to promote better health and performance. Consider the example of a kid carrying one good copy of the gene regulating oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. To supplement his genetic buildup, a diet rich in iron would make up for his inherent less oxygen carrying capacity. He could also join a specific yoga class to help him be trained to be able to hold more oxygen volumes in his lungs. Also, even if you have all the necessary genes to excel at a certain sport, you will still have to train. Nothing is substitute for hard work and dedication. I interviewed Mac Hickox, USA Canoe Kayaks National Sprint Development Director, on the issue of doping in the world of the US Olympic team. He stands by USA Canoe Kayaks and the US Olympic Committee's zero tolerance policy on doping of any form. When I asked him whether he believes that gene doping will be a serious issue in the future, he said, it's a changing world out there that we live in. People who aren't willing to put in the work are looking for a leg up on the competition, and that's an issue that we're looking at. The top athletes from the Northwest are here putting in the work, and that's what's important. I also interviewed local coach Neil Bransfield and asked him what he thought about doping and how it has affected him. Neil used to be an Olympic caliber 800 meter runner, so he knows what it's like to compete at a high level where doping is prevalent. He said, Doping was something that we all watched out for, and it made me sick to think that people would compromise the integrity of competition just to win. When asked about gene doping, he admitted that it was the first time he'd heard about it, but after an ex explanation, he commented, It's amazing what people are willing to put their bodies through to gain an advantage. It seems like everything, but actually train. People tend the, uh, to have the idea that athletes don't have to think about anything but sports, but if you're an athlete, science may play a greater part in your career than you may think. Thanks for listening. This has been Nate Eras. Have a great day.